morning folks it's Todd metal at weatherman here hopefully everyone is doing well this saturday so quick overview of what we have for the severe weather setup today we did talk about this in slight detail last night but we're going to go more in depth with this here we do have a enhanced risk for severe weather which is a tornado and hail driven enhanced risk you can see the hatched 10 percent area over here between Fort Stockton and Midland here and areas off to the east. So we have the threat for potentially a stronger tornado, which would be rated, potentially even be rated above EF2. We've been seeing instances like this over Texas over the last few days. So trend looks like it's continuing tonight. Hate to say it. And then also we have a very large hatched risk for large hail of at least two inches in diameter or greater. I do think there could even be possibilities of three inch or larger hail today as well. We'll have to see how things pan out with that. Do also have a 15% chance of damaging winds over here issued by the SPC. So we're gonna take a little look here at what we have going on with the models currently. And just like in recent days, we have adjacent little glancing blows from the trough that are coming into play. However, today it does look like we have a setup that's a tad bit more traditional we have the subtropical jet coming into play here and this is also digging due to this upcoming trough here which is going to cause us severe weather next week which we'll talk about later in another video that's going to help be the catalyst for this severe weather setup today here a lot of this is going to be induced by the mid levels more so than anything else as far as the upper levels are concerned, not the most stout setup I've ever seen, but you do see a couple of characteristics that you would look for in severe weather. With this trough right here, you always look for this little um, upslope right here, almost as we're transitioning into a ridge here. Uh, this is often called the ski jump feature. And you can see it pretty clearly here. And right on the edge of that little ski jump, you end up having points of lift or even short waves, they're called coming into play here and we see that prevalent with this setup as we get into the afternoon and evening today so between panhandle of texas southwest texas could get some pretty big storms from the looks of it here in fact it even seems pretty likely at this point so if we go ahead and look at the mid levels which is where those short waves are exactly located you can see by the time we get towards about 21 and 22 z this will be about five six o'clock Eastern time, four or five o'clock central. We start to see some really good evidence of our shortwave picking up here. And you can also notice that we have some interesting flow here. We're kind of caught in between a series of troughs here towards the mid to lower levels of the atmosphere. So one thing that I'm making note of is the fact that these storms may have some deviant motion where these storms could literally just kind of loop around itself there's been recent instances where we've had tornadoes form in the last few days where they've just almost done complete U-turns, like an illegal U-turn on the road and end up hitting town. So just because you see the tornado moving one way, if you happen to be in a warning today, make sure you're on your guard because it could easily go right around the other way. And you can even look at the wind barbs and even see it. You can see how this wind barb I'm pointing at here is pushing off from southwest to northeast and then if you go over here you can see this wind barb has stronger winds with it but it's going in the opposite almost in the complete opposite direction here it's going this way so this points of intersection could make for tornadoes with deviant motion so definitely something that needs to be monitored over here as we go throughout the day and then also if you look at our low level jet here based off of what the HRRR is showing us. We do get some good low level jet building in by early afternoon here. And this is a big part of why we have increasing concerns for that tornado threat. Big part of why that 10% hatch risk exists. And we have areas where we're getting up to about 30 knots of low level jet. Threshold numbers right about at that range. And then there's some pockets here where we're getting up to about close to 40 knots. So. We have, an, we have a really interesting environment over here towards Southwest Texas in particular today. So if we go ahead and take a look what our thermodynamics are, we're mainly looking at our dew points. We already know it's gonna be hot here as far as the surface temperatures are concerned. It's getting close to summertime. Texas is almost always hot. But there's also another thing that I'm picking up here 
along with those surface dew points being in the 60s is this area of dry air here so we have a dry line here and the gradient that we have here is unbelievable so right at the very edge of this green area we're looking at 56 degree dew points but if i move my cursor just into the brown here we got 14 degrees so what this dry line does is serve as a point of lift as well to go along with those short waves so that definitely helps the chance of those storms developing and blossoming very quickly so once these storms fire they will have a very good environment to work with here just looking at the uh, cape here which is a good measure of our instability overall we're getting close to 3,000 if not surpassing it at times by the time we get to the point of storm initiation which would be mid-afternoon for the looks of it here and then that these storms have a chance of lasting later into the evening i don't expect this to be a super long duration event but definitely something that will need to be watched maybe even into the overnight here so some things that we'll also look at really quickly in regards to today's threat <laughs> lapse rates are important because that dry air is important when it comes to our storm development here and also our hail threat along with the tornado threat but the steeper the lapse rates usually the better for the storm and as you can see here we have some super steep lapse rates here getting into the eights there's even a few nines hidden within here i think i may have skimmed over one just a little bit but right around this corridor where we're expecting those storms to fire expect the chance for some huge hail expect the chance for maybe a strong tornado and maybe even some damaging ones to go with it the enhanced risk might not apply to damaging ones with this one but i still wouldn't be surprised to see a 70 mile per hour gust or two possible there so another thing we'll look at is our bulk shear at from the surface to one kilometer here so basically looking all the way up to about maybe a thousand feet in the air all the way down and as you can see here watch how we get that bulk shear to really build up over here again 30 knots is usually the threshold number those areas in the red right there where we're getting into the 40s maybe even 45 knot region there so like i said very favorable environment again for tornadoes another good indicator of that is our significant tornado parameter we're going to get up close and personal with this one so we're going to go ahead and take a look at south central us here so we can get a really good look at those values even pick a sounding right here here's the highest value i've seen so far it looks like we're at a looks like we have a really high number we're above a five if i can get it perfect there we go and that's something that really intrigues me as well even though there's a lot of contamination with this what i'm mainly looking at right now is this right here this is called a hodiograph we're looking at these numbers right here zero one two and three these are showing the different heights of the atmosphere so from looking at if we're looking from the surface all the way up to three kilometers here, you notice how this continues to kind of arc upward along the along the y-axis here. This is kind of what you would look for in regards to a tornado threat here. And if we actually move this forward closer to when the storm initiation time would be, you still end up seeing that. Eventually, as that dry line comes in, these storms have a chance of becoming more linear. But even then, I do see that same look, characteristic look of where we're having that push from zero kilometers right here at 20 knots going all the way up to about 30 to 40 knots. Now, if this was going straight up, I would be extremely concerned about a tornado threat. But also the damaging wind threat with this seems like it's going to ramp up a bit as we get later into the evening. So as so we continue to go forward here, we actually went backwards. <laughs> you can see that we have a couple of different areas that pop up here where we get some higher values. So if we get a storm over these regions here, definitely need to be on the lookout. We'll click this sounding really quick and see what we have here. Almost looking like a carbon copy of the exact same storm we have. We were looking the exact same uh, hodiograph we had earlier. Not as much contamination with this one, so maybe a little bit better confidence in that. But looking at all the parameters put together here, this looks like a pretty good environment for tornadoes. Like I said, very moist, very explosive environment. 
We have a lot of instability available. Lapse rates are surprisingly low with this one, but fact of the matter is our shear is very strong. Surface to one shear, you can actually see the value right here. I'm gonna try to see if I can circle that for you right here. This area right here that we're looking at, this is our shear area, and then this is the surface to one. You look for a threshold number 20, we're at 23. So there's all the evidence you need right there. We'll get into more of the details with SKU-T's in a video soon. Look forward to that and also have Kyle on there as well. But this is me nerding out basically at this point. I need to stop looking at this before I make this into like an hour long video. But in any case here, it does look like we have an environment that's very much compatible for all modes of severe weather this evening. So the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and take a look at what our simulated radar is showing us right now. Keep in mind, this particular model updates every hour. So what we're seeing now could easily change. Storm initiation looks like it starts right at about 3, 4 p.m. Central Time. And really, they just kind of blossom from that point onward. This would be towards 5 o'clock or 6. And by the time we get into about 8 o'clock central, most of this is starting to congeal into a line a bit more. So there's a chance that we could have these storms lasting into the overnight. But for the most part here, I think our peak threat for tornadoes is going to be probably, I would say, 4 to 7 here. So four to seven central time, definitely be on your guard. But that's all I got for you guys on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. You need to smash that like button and obliterate that subscribe button too, by the way. Also make sure you're hitting that share button as well and getting that notification bell on. Plenty more severe weather coming up here. We'll have details on that soon. Till then, until this afternoon, of course, take care and have an awesome rest of your day.